because I said so. I'm sure this is a phrase many of us have heard our parents use from time to time as the definitive end to an argument. This phrase leaves little room for rebuttal because there really isn't a foundation to their statement. Your parent has just made an executive decision. Now this usually works out in the end because you trust your parents to be promoting your safety and well-being. Why can't I run across this busy parking lot? Because I said so. Stopped a four-year-old me a lot faster than a detailed explanation of traffic safety could have. When the President of the United States issues an executive order, he has essentially just made a law because he says so. More properly, an executive order is an official written declaration from the office of the President carrying about the same weight as a federal law. Rather than having to go through the process of a bill becoming a law as outlined in Article 1, Section 7 of the U.S. Constitution, an executive order must be signed by the President, approved by the Office of Management and Budget, and by the Attorney General. This is a much faster process, and speed has its advantages. However, that is a lot of power to concentrate in the hands of one individual. So in order to maintain effective checks and balances, there are a few ways around an executive order. Firstly, Congress can pass a law overriding the executive order. But if you'll sing your way through the I'm just a bill schoolhouse rock song with me, you'll run into the obvious problem with that one. The president can veto the bill. And it's extremely difficult to get a two-thirds majority of Congress to overturn a presidential veto. Since Congress has the power of the purse, they often take a different tact. Basically, Congress controls the money, and executive orders can't change that. So Congress can divert funding necessary to carry out an executive order without actually overturning it. Or, another executive order can be used to overturn a previous one. This can be done either by the president who issued the original order or by any subsequent president. It is common for new presidents to use executive orders to rapidly undo some of the policies put in place by their predecessor soon after getting into office. Or the Supreme Court can overturn an executive order. However, this has only happened a handful of times because presidents base their executive orders in the U.S. Constitution, specifically in Article 2. So, what does the Constitution say about executive orders? Well, nothing. Executive orders are not defined in the U.S. Constitution. What Article 2 does is vest executive power in the president and name him Commander-in-Chief. This is the foundation that presidents use for their executive orders. Article 2 also requires that presidents faithfully execute the laws. This prevents the president from using an executive order to overturn or violate an existing law. The vague wording of this section of the Constitution does not guarantee that presidents will always have the power of the executive order, but it also makes it difficult for the Supreme Court to overturn them. As I mentioned, only a few executive orders have been ruled unconstitutional, and the Supreme Court's ruling on the broader topic is that they must be based in the Constitution, specifically in Article 2, or Congress must specifically grant that power to the president. George Washington was the first president to use an executive order. Every president since him has also used executive orders, with the exception of William Henry Harrison. President Harrison died only a month into office because his inaugural speech was so long that staying outside for that length of time gave him pneumonia. I hear that's why they moved the American Legion oratorical contest inside and gave me a time limit. <laughs> As I mentioned, Washington was the first president to use what would be considered an executive order. He did this in the form of a letter dated June 8, 1789. In this letter, he requested that executive department heads provide him with a precise general idea of the state of affairs of the United States that they oversaw. His adjectives, not mine. Washington would issue a total of eight executive orders during his time in office. 
including declaring the U.S. neutral about the war in France and establishing Thanksgiving of that year as a national holiday. Just as Washington set the trend for limiting yourself to two terms in office, Washington set the tone for the use of subsequent executive orders. Alexander Hamilton and James Madison argued about whether or not Washington had the power to declare the US neutral about the war in France. Does anyone here have such bad handwriting you sometimes can't read your own notes? Yeah. You know a document is vague on a subject when its authors argue about what it meant just a few years after they wrote it. Executive orders can range from the very mundane to the very impactful. So let's talk about a few significant executive orders in history. There was a period of time, beginning with the 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt, and ending with the 33rd president, Harry Truman, in which presidents used a much higher number of executive orders per year in office than had been seen before or since. During this time, they used an average of 206 executive orders per year in office. Of these presidents, the 32nd president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, takes the cake with 3,721 executive orders, or about 307 per year in office. Theodore Roosevelt began the trend of using high numbers of executive orders. He was known to refer to the presidency as the bully pulpit, and he intended to make the most of his presidential power during his time in office. In his autobiography, Roosevelt wrote, I did not usurp power, but I did greatly broaden the use of executive power. One of the primary focuses of Roosevelt's campaign was environmental conservation. So he used executive orders to do things like expand the national park system and increase federally protected lands. These were relatively harmless decisions and resources that we still enjoy today. Roosevelt also used executive orders to expedite the construction of the Panama Canal. In one instance of this, he sent US warships to Panama to support their fight for independence so that we could gain access to the land needed to build the canal. Now, this was unconstitutional, as the president does not have the power to mobilize the military in this way. However, it did result in the Panama Canal being built, which now generates about $2 billion in annual revenue. Executive orders are sometimes questionably constitutional, but are often very impactful. For example, the Emancipation Proclamation was an executive order issued by President Abraham Lincoln that freed enslaved people in the Confederacy years before the ratification of the 13th Amendment. He defended this executive order using his expanded executive powers as commander in chief during a time of war. President Harry Truman desegregated the military with an executive order, and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt established Japanese American internment camps during World War II. So clearly, amazing civil rights victories and tragedies have been the result of executive orders. For these reasons, it is a citizen's responsibility to their country to be an informed voter and to use that information to vote for a candidate that they trust with the power of the executive order. The Declaration of Independence reads, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Knowing that presidents have the power of executive orders means that voters must be able to trust their candidates' potential executive orders. And this is not an issue that's dictated along party lines, as George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and Donald Trump all used around 260 executive orders each during their time in office. You trust your parents' reasoning behind, because I said so, because they are promoting your best interest. You must trust your president to do the same. It is a citizen's responsibility to vote. Not only that, but to vote for a candidate that they trust with the power of the executive order, because I said so.